Hey everybody, welcome back to the gardening artist Reba here. So I've done some moving, zhuzhing around in the garden, um, what have you. <laughs> and um, the other day I spent some time and I was in dire need of um, mowing next to the fence over here. Um, the grass on the other side is pretty darn high on the other side of the fence and um, it goes out for a good almost one and a half to two feet and a lot of the grass seed from the tops of uh, the grass that was growing there was actually poking through the fence and also coming up in between my pots and it was starting to drop seeds into my container pots and with that being said you know what I'm gonna be having to do in the near future and that will be pulling out little tiny grass starts that begin growing in my containers and it's a real pain in the rear to have to go through and pull grass out of all of your container pots so I went ahead and moved them away from the fence line and now we have a straight line so let me show you we kind of have a straight line all the way down on the side it's about about four feet across and it does look like one of my trees blew over in the wind so now I know I had a feeling that was gonna happen because there's kind of a slope right there I'm not gonna mess with it at this moment I'm gonna come do it here in a little bit after I get off the um, camera with you guys but uh so now I need to pick that up I think maybe if I ground in the back if there's any of those little pine cones that used to be um, from the pine trees that were in the back. There are some still on the ground back here. I might try to gather some of those up and I like to use them to kind of level out my pots, which is nice. I think I will do that. I'll go and find something. Um, I just noticed something's blooming here and we've got little, um, it's the, uh, elderberry is blooming a lot of my bushes are blooming a lot later this year I've noticed um, these blooms um, formed and are now blooming now and it's like mid mid July I'm wanting to say and then I have another one here one of my other elderberries I'm trying to see if I can see it um, one of these this one right here it's just now forming like a little itty bitty cluster right there. And that'll be blooming probably <laughs> in August. Um, it's very, very late for it to be doing that. So um, I have those over here now, but now we have a straight shot all the way down this area and it's away from the fence line and it's pretty much straight. So I really will only need to move these little pots here out of the way do some weed eating but I can mow right up next to them and then I can get in in between individually because these little pots are easy to move and then I can weed whack all of the grass down that grows up in between on that side now on the other side I have um, picked up some of these little rug strips at Dollar Tree and they're rubber on the other side and I thought they would make great um, like a weed barrier um, I'm not really worried about the grass dying underneath of them because the grass in this yard grows back so quickly that even if I have it down here for a long time, the grass will all grow back again. So I'm not really worried about that at all. Um, it doesn't take very long for it to grow back. So I have all of these all done up here. I didn't get to three of my little... Uh, uh, what do you call them tomato starts they're still in the little cups I bought them in and uh, I never did get around to potting them up I do have one pot I think right over here I could put um, one in and I have a tomato in this one and the tomato in that one over there so uh, and then I could put one in here and then I think I could put another tomato in this one right here um, there's just a couple pots in there that have some soil in them 
so that's what I'm thinking um, but the rug was really good just just so that I don't have to weed eat around my pots because my weed eater was starting to tear up some of my pots because I've had some of them for a little while and um, I don't want to have to go out and buy a new pot right away so I figured this was a cheap option was getting some of these little rugs um, I might go back and get um, an, another small handful of them and then that way I can have all of my fig trees on them as well and um, maybe even over by around my greenhouse would be really nice to have some down around the greenhouse as well I am not planning on moving these out of these out of this area again um, while we're living at this house um, because I've been I guess the last six years I've been trying to find the right area to kind of keep everything and there's really no good spot in this yard um, I'm always having to move things around um, so I'm thinking I'm gonna try to leave them where they are um, they're far enough away from the fence that I don't have to um, worry about it the only thing I liked about having them up against the fence was um, when the wind blows how that one tree fell over because um, the wind catches the the upper portion of the trees and it acts as a cell and they fall over with the wind so that was the one good thing I liked having them up against the fence but with the grass growing tall on the other side it was really better for me to pull them away so I need to um, I need to level out that pot and maybe put some of those large rocks in the top of it and um, go from there it should be all right after that um, so that's what I'm thinking about doing I also might even put another rug strip along the other side so that I don't have to move the elderberries so that is an option um, the figs are coming along very very well I've been noticing a lot of uh, figlet formations on a lot of the figs um, I do kind of have them all together really closely right here but that's okay because they're all fairly young and I really don't mind having them that close together because I'm not really going for a lot of fruit production at this point I'm just going for you know for some growth I am going to need to prune them back just because I want to keep them on the smaller side for when we do get ready to move one day. Um, I know I've been saying that for the last three, almost four years. Anybody's been on my channel for that length of time. Thank you so much for being here. Um, uh, so, I mean, if you're subscribed and you're still watching, I mean, really from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much. Because I don't make a dime. <laughs> from my youtube channel i do this strictly for the the joy of just making videos and i tend to yap on a lot and um i don't I'll always have a point <laughs> so anyways thank you so much for being here so um <clears throat> my figs they're doing good i have this one here looks really wonky on the end i don't know if you guys can see that this is a fig nior nior de corum uh, so I have that one that looks really really wonky on the on the bottom of that fig This time of day is really not the greatest time of day to be filming because the sun's very harsh I really need to come out here in the morning like around 8 But I generally don't get off work for my corporate job until about 9 a.m um, Because I do tend to work very early hours and uh, at that time the the sun intensity is kind of the same as right now and so I've unless I'm feeling like even later more towards dusk that might even be a better option but um, we're in the evening now but it's right at that right time where the sun is just kind of just perfectly annoying <laughs> I guess if that is such a thing anyways so let's walk over here or maybe I should walk from the other side I don't know but I have some other ones. This one is my Palermo Red. I have a little figlet on it. So a lot of fig for figlet formations on a lot of my figs this year. I did fertilize the majority of all of these figs this year, um, especially in the smaller pots. I can't remember if I did it in the larger pots. I'm wanting to say that I did, but I can't remember for sure. Shame on me if I didn't. Um, this one here is the Sisters. 
I got this um, particular one from, oh, what was the guy's name? It's hard to keep track of all the people you get stuff from because um, some of them are a little bit more memorable than other people. Uh, I can't remember. Um, it was somebody out of Northern California. Anyways, it's called The Sisters. Um, and anyways... It's a nice little variety. Um, I did. I was able to determine. I hadn't heard a lot of people talking about this one, but I was able to determine last year that it is a common variety, and um, it's putting on a bunch of figlets on it. So they are on the smaller side, but they're definitely worth it because it's a very productive little tree. So it's definitely worth it in my opinion, especially for this area. Noticing that it has as much um, fruit set as it does at this time of year is really great. Um, I'm hoping that I'll be able to um, eat the fruit from it next month. It's probably going to be ready if it's like last year. I'm wanting to say everything seems to be about two to three weeks late this year when it comes to um, fruit um, ripening. So I'm hoping that with them have been in the greenhouse and having that head start and then having fertilized them, that they will actually, you know, ripen a lot sooner this year. This one here is called Cherry Burma. I got this one from Sacred Origins. Now, I actually didn't get it directly from her. I did get it from um, another person. We did a trade with like Rod Grod or something like that. Um, I do have quite a few of the fig trees from her collection. And um, I've had the most success from those. And so I cannot wait for that to ripen. I do have one really good sized one right here. Um, and that is way bigger than even the sisters. And the development is much quicker. So um, other ones that I'm seeing development on here. I do have some little ones in here. and They've been swelling. I've been trying to water them and get the, give them a lot of good water. This is my uh, Gros Monstrous de la Terrie. Um, so it has a few little figlets on it and it is doing very well. I'm hoping to be able to try that this year as well. Um, I see little figlets on a lot of them. I'm just trying to point out some of the ones that I'm seeing the most growth from. I'm sure I will miss some. I have some here that I got from Sacred Origin. This one is putting out some little, um, little nodes for figlets. Um, I have a cream de mora and then cream crema de mora is this one here that I was just no noticing the little um, the little figlet formations and this other one here, here is crema de mango and I have two of that one in this pot um, so that's looking good um, last year she sent me some of the cotton candy variety and they are I thought that they had one of them or two of them had died during the winter, but they all survived and they're all growing very nicely and have a lot of really great growth. No fruit this year on that, I would suspect, but um, I'm excited for that one. The name alone, Cotton Candy, come on now. And then this one here has a bunch of figs on it. And this one here is um, Gulbiu and it's a French fig. And so I'm excited about that. The amount of figlets that it has on it this year is very promising. I am definitely keeping note. I'm going to come through with my notebook and um, physically write down the ones that I see the most growth on. And um, be keeping an eye and keeping a tally because that's how I'm really going to know um, which trees for my region that I need to keep. And then which ones will be getting cold in the future. I do see some figlet formations on this one over here this is sunfire i'm really excited about this one because i've not heard a lot about that one so i do see some fruit forming on that one i wager to say that that one's probably got smaller fruit and then coming on down these ones so i have all these ones in crates these are my definite keeps down in this section um and then i have some in this section that are possibly duplicates and or get rid of eventually possibly in my cooling section some of them are really great varieties that are on a lot of people's wish lists and that sort of thing but um for me in the areas that we're even thinking about moving to some of them might not do as well because we're possibly going to be moving to a little bit colder region 
and um, the LSUs, I'm not sure if those will do good in a colder region. So I'm not sure if we'll be taking those ones with us. It does look like I've got um, some fig formation here on this one here. And this one is probably one that's good in the cold region. This is a um, Bataliga. I know I'm butchering that. Um, so that's that might be a maybe to keep but these ones that are in the smaller pots will be easy to move so i'm not so worried i might just cut do like rejuvenating cuttings on these and then sell off a bunch of cuttings from these in the winter and then um protect them um in a in a nice area of the greenhouse probably and maybe if i get some more crates and um that way they can come back and have like a rejuvenation um, pruning and see what kind of growth I get on them in the, the following year. So I might be doing that with quite a few of my fig trees is um, giving them some drastic um, cutbacks, even though they are on the smaller side, the majority of them, um, just just for moving purposes for in the future. And then also just kind of experiment to see how well they'll do um, with just being trimmed back and um and then seeing how they grow the next season um i have had a lot of really nice leaves on a lot of the fig trees this year i contribute that to um waking up early in the greenhouse and the fertilization last year i didn't fertilize and i didn't see hardly any fruit set so i'm seeing a lot of fruit set this year i do contribute that to age one and two fertilization also, I've been getting them, giving them a lot of water. Now, this one has an air layer on it. I do need to get out here and um, cut the air layer off. However, the um, <laughs> this branch has a bunch of figs on it, and I really don't want to cut it off while the figs are on it. Um, I mean, I could. Um, this branch down here actually has some figs on it as well. I'm trying to see. This one's um, the LSU Hollier. So that's kind of exciting to see. Um, I've got, this is my Antonio's Black. And I have an air layer on it, which I do need to get off. I'm not really seeing a lot. Oh, there is one little fig formed on it right here. So maybe I'll just, maybe I'll, I'll uh, get a cup or something and stick it on that. Because it needs to be, that little air layer needs to be taken off. But at the same time, I really don't want to cut it with fruit on it. But we'll see. Maybe I will go ahead and just do that. Um, and then the rest of them are all looking really good. This air layer didn't work. In fact, the top part of it died. Um, so I'm looking to see if any of these other ones... I know a lot of them have um, fruit buds on them. The little figlets have been forming on a lot of these. So, But they're looking pretty darn good, you guys. Um, and then coming across, I did have a bunch of the figs on these, um, and I like using it, but at the same time, they're kind of dark. And if I put those together, the shelves, I don't, don't really put any plants on the bottom shelf if I have them stacked up on top of each other because of them, the fact that there's just not enough room underneath for, um, really, you know, putting anything Anyways, over here, this is by the greenhouse now, and um, my Azoros Dark actually has a lot. Now, these are definite keepers along this section here. These are fig trees that I'm going to be keeping as well. I know I have a lot that I'm keeping, but I told my husband I will eventually get rid of the majority of them because I really want, I want to find out which ones I love the flavor of the best, and what better way than to grow them and... Um, in the meantime, I am growing them and going to be eating them and tasting them. And I'll, some of them I will always keep in containers. So it's just going to be deciding which ones I truly love that are worth keeping in containers. I wouldn't mind having a couple like on a, in a sun patio where um, they're in a container pot during the winter time. And then um, they can be moved out like like a tree on casters or something like that so they can be moved out into the yard um especially if we move someplace a little bit colder and then i have some ideas for experiments for in-ground um 
growing so like um i've seen them do it up in canada in fact where they have dug holes in the ground and then created those greenhouses that are kind of like subterranean like down in the earth a little bit and those have done really well with having some citrus trees and that sort of thing so um i would really like to try that with my citrus trees and with a few fig trees and um, possibly a couple other little things. So that is an idea that um, I would love to um, experiment with. Um, but my Azoras Dark is really starting to uh, take off here with getting its fruit set going. And then the other one next to it is Harry's Crete. And it's looking really good. And then these ones here are all seedlings that I grew from seed um, from Northern California out of the um, Olive City region, uh, so near Corning, California. Um, one of the trees uh, that I got um, fruit from is no longer there. They cut it out. Um, somebody came through and uh, pulled it out. It was the, I guess it was the city, but um, yeah, it got, it got um, taken out. And um, so, I have, um, there was a couple trees in that mixture and two of the fruits, I can't remember which was which, um, but I did ha get one of the cuttings to, um, to take from one of the trees and um, the other one did not take, which is kind of a bummer. This one was from tree number one, which I think was the one closest to the road. Um, and so it is growing. I am not really seeing any fruit set. I mean, I see where some could possibly develop, but nothing this year. I suspect that next year that'll probably produce fruit, but it's growing really nicely this year and it's looking really good. And then these were um, grown from seed. Um, they grew last summer and I had started from seed in the late summer um, before so we're in 2022 now so they grew all in 2021 so I started them in 2020 so that's how these are looking and one of them from the Olive City gym I actually put out into this pot all by itself and <laughs> it's doing really really well you guys it is looking very nice um, and so very very pleased and then two of them i can't remember which is which um one pot is olive city gym i want to say that's not olive city gym this was these were seedlings from fruit from tree number one this was from the fruit from tree number one and i wager to say they're pretty darn close in uh relatives the trees were relatives it was definitely fruit from um bird spreading um they were wild trees so um but i do believe they're in the adriatic family this one was uh from fruit tree number two fruit from the tree um these are all seedlings from that i'm just kind of picking off the gross leaves um and then this one's here is from the olive city gym and these ones tend to have more leaves like this on it i've noticed and uh, so we'll just have to see how it goes. They do have the fig wasp there in Northern California. So there is that. Um, I've got um, a few really cool looking little trees along here. It does look like I've got some fruit set here. Um, this one here is trying to put out fruit. And this one is, of course, the labels facing the other direction, you guys. That one's Blanche de Argentile. And then Dalmady and Nior de Chrome. Oh, I thought. Oh, so I've got two Nior de Chrome. So, uh, oh no, that was. I can't remember. I may have to uh, call that one if I have a duplicate because the other one's setting fruit a lot sooner. So I may, I may, I may. We'll see. Um, and then these ones were from Olive City Gym, cuttings from my niece when she was living there, and um, some more right here. And um, anyways, so that's how everything's looking in here. And then I've got fruit set in the greenhouse, you guys. Um, 
I've got my pawpaw trees here, which these might need to be put into a greenhouse for sure to grow in our region, um, especially if we go someplace a little bit colder. I finally have fruit set for the first time on this one here, which is my um, Violetta from uh, Burnt Ridge. And um, that's the funny thing. The fig trees that I purchased from Burnt Ridge and primarily, primarily from Rain Tree are just finally starting the fruit and I've had them for almost four years. Um, not, not Burnt Ridge, but primarily Rain Tree. I've been very, very bummed. Um, I actually had more fruit from the free rain tree um, rescue plant than I have from anything else. There's a bunch of fruit on this one too. Um, this one is my De La, I'm wanting to say Roca. Um, yeah, De La Roca. And I have an air layer on this one here. So I'm gonna be selling the bigger one off and um, because it's just in a bigger pot and I need to size down just for um, the move. And then this is a Chicago Hardy. I have an air layer on it. I do have a fruit on it this year. This one was a, from the box store. This was the very first fig tree I got. Um, and I finally have fruit on it. Um, I have my Gypsy Zingarella. And, um, oh, this is getting close to ripening. I should be seeing some swelling on this soon. Um, yeah, so that's good. Hopefully soon. I'll keep you guys posted on that. And then I have, that's a, um, a Breba. And it's so beautiful. And then this one here, these ones are my uh, main crops that are coming on this season. And then here's some more um, main crops on the other Zingarella Gypsy on this side. And um, they're looking mighty, mighty fine, mighty fine. And then over here, this is the uh, my mystery. Um, I've labeled this one as a golden teardrop, I think. Yeah, but I'm not sure which one this is because there's not a lot of information. And of course, I'm filming at the wrong time of the day, but they're quite a good size. They're, I would wager to say like a medium size. And I'm hoping oh, it's starting to soften up a little bit. I did water really good last night too. I'm hoping that I'm going to start seeing some ripening on these because you guys, this has had fruit on it since February when it started forming these and they have looked like this for months and months and months. Now they have looked about this size since May, at least they grew to about this size and the beginning of May, they were about this size. So I haven't seen a whole lot more growth on them. And, um, man, I'm, I, I had suspected that them being in the greenhouse, they would have ripened by now, but I don't know what's going on. Maybe if I had the door closed on either side, so it gets really hot in here, but then I don't want everything wilting and dying. I've got, uh, some figlets on the, uh, Sangue Dolce down here. Nothing developing on this one, which I think this one is um, Chico Strawberry, possibly. And then the other one, I think, is possibly... Um, oops, I'm knocking things over, guys. That's my finger. <laughs> that is a Campanieri is what I'm thinking this one is right here. And I do have some... Uh, it's already starting to lignify here, but I think these are... Um, this is on, this is a main crop that's coming on right there. So we'll wait and see what happens. And then I got a bunch of herbs and different things in here. Some Chilean guavas over here. And then some different um, herbal type uh, bushes that have gone to flower. And then I have my um, tree back here in the corner. This is the Moringa. It has gone to seed and it is forming all the seed pods now. And I was wondering if it would. So I just let it go and do its thing, you guys. So I'm excited to watch these grow. Um, they were a decent size. A good, uh, a good, you know, little over a, a like, oh, like if you were to picture a giant pea, basically. They're, they were close, in between a size of a pea and a garbanzo bean. So like maybe a small garbanzo bean size. And I got... A ladybug on there that is doing a job 
It's so exciting. It's just walking around there. I don't know if you guys can see him, if I can zoom in. He's walking around. Anyways, and then all of these fig trees on this side. I've got some. This one, I was thinking it was, um, um, I don't know what it is. Look at, they're so red. The little figlets are so red on this. I don't know. Where's my tag? There it is. I was thinking that this was um, probably Glacia Negra, but I have no, I have no clue. But it's putting on main crop, so we'll have to wait and see. And then again, I don't know what this one is either. But I have five different varieties of fig trees that these two could possibly be. I've got my peppers out here and my Egyptian walking onions and a bunch more fig trees. Um, I wager to say that that air layer needs to come off because it's starting to split open. And that means I've got a bunch of roots in there. And this is my Gambino. I actually have two air layers on this one. So I probably should take those off and get them transplanted because um, this one's again in a, a, a little bit larger of a pot. And um, I would like to have um, just to kind of make it a little bit smaller. It's not too big of a pot, so it's definitely movable, but at the same time, I kind of want everything to look, you know, a certain way when we get ready to leave. And then these are all of my uh, smaller starts this year. I did finally, you guys, get one of the ones that I was truly trying to get. And this will real be really what determines what kind of fig trees I end up keeping are the ones that I like have tried to get for the longest time. And one of them is Habati de Argentil. I actually have two of those in here. And then I have some other ones. I do have a, a Bordeso Rosa, which I'm kind of excited about that one. And um, then I've got some air layers that had come off of some of my trees over here that I'm culling. And they are finally fruiting, <laughs> which were the ones from Rain Tree. Uh, some of the ones from Rain Tree. And um, so I've got a lot of this, a lot of new growth on this Lotarua right here. And it wasn't doing a whole lot. And now that I've pruned it back, it's <laughs> growing out very lusciously. And... The same thing with some of the other ones over here. And I'm actually seeing fruit set on some of them now. So um, they just weren't doing anything before. And so we will see what happens. Um, I already have air layers from the majority of these. I still have one on this, which I don't necessarily need to keep the um, Kadota. Uh, so I'm probably going to go ahead and um, get that one out of here as well. Um, and then this is my mishmash of different things. My Coca-Cola scented geraniums, which I already have one of those. So I don't need all of those. So I'm probably going to sell those ones off as well. Um, I've got my bucket of, uh, comfrey over here, which is great for making fertilizer, um, for my plants. And then this is the improved Meyer lemon. It had all that die back during, I thought I lost it, but it came back pretty well um and then I got all my herbs up there so everything is looking very very nicely you guys um and uh, it's kind of a long video thanks for watching it anyways I'm gonna go ahead and get off of here and uh I just feel really good about having the majority of the garden straightened out the next place to straighten out is in the greenhouse actually I do need to reconfigure everything I need to mow a lot and get that all situated but for the most part i've i've got a lot of everything done that i was really wanting to get done now i have clean spaces to be able to mow so much easier i had a straight up maze out here and the grass had gotten so tall that nobody wanted to tackle it so i had to organize it i had to get it so that things were manageable so now things are manageable again and um anyways you guys thanks for watching Comment, like, subscribe, click that bell button. As always, have a wonderful one and God bless. Bye.